Rachel, it's so nice to see you. Hi, Karen. It's lovely to see you as well. I'm so excited to have you speaking at our second online NCH conference. Thank you so much for agreeing to talk for us. Um, so for those people out there who don't know your background, tell us a little bit about yourself and um, how you get came to get into hypnotherapy. Okay. Um, well, thank you for inviting me. Um, it's a shame we're not face to face, but there we go. We'll do it online again. It's fine. Uh, yes, yeah, so my background is I'm a psychologist, um, trained um, at Cardiff and Southampton universities. And then I worked as an academic in Bristol for quite a long time. I think I did 20 years in academia, which is a very long time. <laughs> um, and I wanted to go into practice and I wanted to add some skills to what I offer people. And I was talking to someone about hypnotherapy and I thought, hmm, sounds cool. So I looked at a course locally, went for interviews, signed up and got trained in delivering hypnotherapy. It took about a year to complete the course. And along the way, I was talking to the guy who uh, had put the course together, David Newton. And I said to him, what's the evidence for this then? And he said, well, why don't you go and find out? And so I started reading some papers on hypnosis and hypnotherapy. And where I was working at the university, we had a neuroscience lab. And in there, we had bits of kit that would kind of show you what was happening in the brain while you were doing anything at all. And I thought, you know what, I really fancy seeing what happens in the brain while somebody is in trance. And so um, I got him over to the lab, showed him what we could do. And we created a research project. And one of the things that I'm really interested in is how the use of language in trance kind of works on different parts of the brain. So I got really interested in creativity because what I found with the work that I was doing is that I can't change what's going on in the person's life. I can't change the, I don't know, the commute to work, what's in the fridge, the relationship with their partner. If you like, you know, I can't change elements of that but I can change how the person deals with it and creativity is kind of that it's kind of you know everybody has the same kind of building blocks if you like for something but it's people think about those building blocks in a different way and some people get different outcomes based on kind of the same uh, information they have and a, a good example of that uh, which I often give is like how many uses can you think of for a brick which is quite literally a building block. <laughs> and so people will say things like, oh, you could build a wall with it, build a house with it. And then other people will be like, we well, could keep your pens in it, couldn't you? You could keep matches in it. Uh, you could throw it through a window. You could um, you know, do all these different things. And I just found it really interesting how many ways people came up with to use a brick. And it just got me to thinking about my clients and the work that I do. Every single one of them's got a brick, but what they do with it, it you know, is down to them. And one of the things I treated myself to before lockdown, I've had so much fun in lockdown, I can tell you, is actually this little bit of kit. Wow. Uh, I know. How cool is this? So this is an EEG kit. So it picks up on the electrical activity of the brain. And you just kind of slide it on. I won't kind of put it on properly now. You slide it on. And within a minute or so, you can detect people's brain waves. I went, like, what's going on? I know, cool. That um, is fun. <laughs> it's so much fun. Lockdown has just been great. <laughs> so, I have looked at lots of people wearing this during trance. And so one of the things I really want to talk about at the conference, I'm so excited that you've asked me to, you know, the different elements of it, the kind of relaxation, the deepener, the metaphor, the hypnotic suggestions, the visual imagery. How do different elements kind of work on the brain? How are they received by the brain? And what part of trance is really important for creating this kind of new way of thinking, this creativity that I'm looking for, you know, with my clients? And I don't know if I should give it away, but there is a part of it. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> Spoiler alert. There is a part of what we say that really stimulates the creativity. And it's amazing because we can really see it happen on the brain. And what I'm going to do is use lots of videos in my talk and show you 
real life examples of brains reacting to certain things that we say. I think, going, I think that's so yeah. fascinating because <laughs> when you're with a client, obviously uh, without such a piece of kit or that type of background, you see the results as they come back and as things do change for them um, mm-hmm. in their life. But to actually kind of see it real time, yeah. so few people get that experience. It's amazing. And, you know, when you're working with people like this, you can actually see the whole thinking process happen. You can see them imagining themselves in a a pleasant place. You can imagine them, you can see them imagining themselves kind of thinking about things in a different way. You know, the type of um, language I use is based in Ericksonian hypnotherapy, so quite indirect language. So the language in trials I've looked at so far has been suggestions that change is possible rather than you will not do this or you will do this. Um, I know it's quite a simplification of direct, <laughs> direct us, but you know, it's fine. And so you can see the person hearing this message that change is possible, that they can do, be, think, whatever it is that they need to do differently in order to evoke the change that they want to see in their lives. If you're using this in real time with people, sometimes as part of this research have you ever had an occasion where it's not looking like it's forming the pattern that you would want it to you're not getting the response that you might have hoped and it's made you kind of change your approach immediately okay so most brains do the same thing which is really interesting because I've done this on people who think that they're not hypnotizable people who think that they are hypnotizable so that's one kind of interesting thing that whether the person thinks they're hypnotizable or not is kind of irrelevant. People say, oh, I'm not good at kind of mental imagery. I don't really see things when I dream. And they still do the same thing in their brain. It still follows the same pattern. There does seem to be a little bit of a difference between um, people who are typically very creative and people who are more kind of methodical um, in their way of problem solving. So people who are very creative, so kind of artists, writers, they um, jump to creativity much more quickly than people who would describe themselves as quite mathematical, quite analytical. They take more time in reaching that conclusion, that moment where they think, right, I've worked this out now. So there does seem to be that kind of difference. But other than that, um, we haven't seen it yet. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's really interesting. And it uh, sets us up for such a fascinating talk. Oh, I hope so. Yes. I can't wait to hear the full version and find out all the information. It's really wonderful. As I say, thank you again for joining us. And, um, 